Welcome to the Answers for Elders radio show. Meet the trusted experts who will give you straight answers and will help guide you on the path of later life care. Now, here's your host, founder, caregiver, and CEO, Suzanne Newman. And welcome back, everyone, to Answers for Elders radio network heard across the USA. And we are talking about animal assisted intervention, also known as therapy animals. And I am here with Marlena the Lasco Barker, who is my right hand and oversees our Washington Therapy Dogs um, group that we have now, what, about a hundred and some dogs out there, um, uh, making visits all over greater Puget Sound. And we started our own group during the pandemic. And obviously, um, when during the pandemic, we realized that something needed to, to change. And so we contacted a trainer we got involved with a group of us that just started the whole thing and we went through official therapy dog training. And so all the training I understand is not required, but the actual behaviors of being a therapy dog um, team uh, need to obviously pass an evaluation to become registered. Marlena, would you just give us an overview of what all is required? Sure. So just to reiterate what Suzanne said, there are no requirements in terms of a list of certifications or pre-qualifications or prerequisites or anything in order to qualify to go in for an evaluation with any one of the organizations listed on the American Kennel Club's website. There's about 50 different organizations across the country. So I suggest you go to the American Kennel Club's website to look all those up, but none of them require any prerequisites. However, Many of them suggest and re recommend basic obedience. And mm -hmm. what that looks like is American Kennel Club has a program called AKC, or I'm sorry, AKC is their abbreviation, but it's called CGC, which stands for Good a Canine, canine good, good Citizen. Citizen. And Canine Good Citizen, there's a, an extension to that. One of them is called Urban and the other one is called Community. And that gives you even more skill sets to learn yeah. while you're preparing as a therapy dog team. And it's yeah. instrumental in giving you the basic foundation. So let's say then that you are an amazing dog trainer yourself as the parent. You know, I call them parents, right? So you and your uh, partner. Parents, I love and, that. <laughs> and you're really good at training your own dog. Great. Go ahead. Take the test yourself. You can conduct your own test. Look at the website. Look at the list of things that they need to be good at doing. Mm -hmm. if, if you need a little bit of help or if you need a lot of help, if maybe the dog is experiencing anxiety or they're shy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. or perhaps they're a rescue, then I highly recommend that you enlist in an eight-week program in which we actually offer as an organization all over the Puget Sound and Spokane as well, all the way as far north as Bellingham and south as Olympia, and also in eastern Washington now in Spokane, like I mentioned. So I highly recommend some sort of training, whether it be four weeks or eight weeks, to get prepared. Absolutely or the test because you're taking yeah. the test. Yeah. And also just to know um, too, um, life is a therapy dog team. Obviously you get to pick your days when you go. There isn't any real um, structure. In other words, it's, it's a volunteer position obviously to go, but um, tell us a little bit about what happens on the visit briefly. Sure. So one of the things that we do is it's so important is to build relationships with the activity directors and the people that are associated with the organization or the facility that you're visiting, the community that you're connecting with, because mm -hmm. you want them to have a list of best practices so they know what sure. to expect, how to set up so that everybody is safe, including your dog. Your mm -hmm. dog's well-being as well as the residents is equally important because we want everyone to be safe. And so there's a list of best practices that Suzanne and another expert had created years ago. We've added a few things and enhanced that. Please let me know if you want access to that so we can connect with the activities directors or the executive directors, whomever is the person mm -hmm. that is our contact there. And then we go there 
early before the scheduled time, before the scheduled visit, and we look around the premise to, and the room that we're going to be visiting in to make sure there's no food crumbs, no, God forbid, right. pills on the ground, or maybe even some coffee that's really distracting over there, making bubbling noises and things of that nature, food trays. Um, so it's really important to set right. everyone up and all of the dog and handler teams for success. Yes, and I totally 500% agree with that. And and certainly, especially in memory care communities, um, you know, you want to make sure that the dog has access to that person, whether there's not a wheelchair or a walker blocking them, so that you have that connection. And uh, you always want to make sure that there's a staff member uh, present because obviously if someone has an episode or some sort of a, you know, an anxiety attack or something like that, that you have the ability to do that. So obviously we're very um, excited. And again, Marlena, you people, you can reach her at WA, that's W-A, therapydogs.org and just click on collaborate. And you can actually find a group near you across the USA in your neighborhood if you're interested in becoming a team. And we'll be right back right after this. Let's work together and help fund a cure in supporting the Walk to End Alzheimer's this year. And learn more and donate by visiting alzlikezebra.org or just call 800 800- 272-3900. That's alz.org or 800-272-3900. 